In this video, we are going to be making this 48 inch planter box, another one of my top selling boxes. Same rules apply, free plans and cut diagrams in the description below. And to answer the, I hope those nails can hold up all that dirt, I'm pretty sure she's up to code. There are several similarities between, well, pretty much all of the boxes that I make. And there are only a few extra steps to make this box as opposed to the previous video. If you haven't seen the iconic three picket planter box video, it will suggest at the end of this video, once you make it through. I appreciate all the support and kindness of the community I am building here on YouTube, and thank you for being a part of it. This planter box is going to require seven pickets total. I cut off the staples holding the barcode. The ends are usually rough and not at 90 degrees. Lower your blade so the little teeth stick up only an eighth of an inch above the board you are cutting. I set my table saw to a sixteenth of an inch under one and three quarters of an inch, or one and eleven sixteenths. I chose this measurement to get three equal strips for the legs and top lip. There is even a little sliver taken off the last pass, so I know they are all the same size, since the picket's widths can vary. I ripped two pickets for these longer boxes. There is more waste and pieces left over, which can be used for future projects, since they all utilize this one and three quarters strip. Anybody notice anything? New t-shirt? Maybe a push stick? I decided to make Mach 1 of the push stick that I liked, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently I discovered a Gatorade bottle can connect the bridge between your table saw and your vacuum. Check that video out as well, after all the others that I've recommended so far. At the miter saw, I took two of the ripped down one and three quarters of an inch pieces and cut them to 16 inches for the legs. After making my first cut, I repeat the cut using one of the legs as a guide. Four pickets get cut to 44 inches long. Then we cut two 12 and 3 quarters inch pieces as well. This takes care of the sides. And with only four pickets, we now have all four long sides, four short sides, and four of our bottom boards. The last picket, we will be cutting more of the bottom boards. Math says that we need roughly nine of these. 44 inches divided by five and a half is eight. Minus the four we already have leaves us with an additional four pieces needed. I use a 44 inch long side to align the length of the support for the bottom boards. This runs the total distance of the long side. Using the one and three quarter rip down picket, I cut two of these. As mentioned before, we do have more waste than the three picket planters. And that is all of our cuts. These long strips are for the top lip. I cut them last to know exactly how long to cut them and so that they fit perfect. These boards are for the ledger support on the bottom. Then we have the bottoms, the short sides, the legs, and the long sides. The only hand tools required from this point on are a drill, some glue, and a nail gun. I also use an impact gun, a square, oh, and a pencil later on. Grab two of the long pieces and make sure the good side is facing up. This is going to be the outside of the box. I'm using a Tight Bond 3 Ultimate. This is a waterproof exterior glue that isn't as thick as other glues. Squirt a line of glue and align the leg with the end cuts of the long boards. Fire in four nails and repeat the process. Starting with the long sides means that the sides of the box and the bottom can be cut to the same size. Plus, this gives the shorter side more surface area because the legs are farther apart. I also apply glue all the way down the leg so that they do not separate later on. The leg's edges are flush on the interior, creating a lip to cover the edges of the short sides. Three nails hold it in place. The nails are mainly there to hold the boards together while the glue dries. Now repeat the process for the other side. And yes, the nail counter is back. I script my videos before shooting and my guess is 125 nails. Take a guess at the number of nails you think this project requires. Speaking of nails, I am using a Bostish 18 gauge 1 inch nail. I chose 1 inch so the nails wouldn't fire through both boards when nailing the legs or ledger board together. This balancing act can get a little tricky. If you have a wall or something to prop the board up onto, 
that's a good option as well. Apply some glue to the top lip and align the short boards with the top of the box. I have had a few boxes where the pickets were not the same width and one side was longer than the other, but this is less noticeable with how the legs are wrapped around. Flip it over and guess what? Repeat. If you have a board that is cupped pretty bad, just note most of the glue is going to leak out, so try and target the area where the boards will make contact. I didn't subtract the short side's thickness from the ledger board, so the ledger needs 2 inches trimmed off of them. In the cut diagram, I left them the same length as the long sides. If they are too long, trim them down a bit, and if they are too short, it's okay that they don't butt up against the short sides. Apply some glue to the face of the ledger board, and fire in some nails. Repeat for the other side. Rotate the planer box and apply glue to the top of the ledger board. Each bottom board gets three nails on each side. Again, cupped pickets affect the box dimensions quite a bit. I like to align a few boards before nailing them in place. This also allows me to squeeze the two longer side walls together so that the bottom boards are snug. Keep an eye on that nail counter. Is anyone still in the running? This box has an unsatisfyingly even number of pickets for the bottom so the board we'll need to rip down is not perfectly in the center. Measure the final board, rip it down to size, and nail it in place. I zip a few GRK 1.5 inch cabinet screws through the leg on the long side. I do this now so I can line up my screw before the top lip is installed. These nails can be used with treated lumber if you decide to go that route instead of using cedar. I borrow two smaller pieces from the scrap pile and cut them at a miter to 6 inches long. These will support the long sides so the upper board has support when dirt is added. Find the center of the long sides and I use my square to make sure they are perfect. But you could also eyeball it, the dirt will cover it up. Drill two 5 16 inch holes in each of the bottom boards about 2 inches center from the long sides. Most of your water drainage occurs when the dirt dries and leaves a space around the inside of the box, so you want the drain holes closer to the interior so that the dirt has some time to absorb the water. For the lip, measure the box's assembled width. Mine was 45 inches, so I am cutting my tops to 45 and 5 eighths of an inch. Make an adorable little triangle, and cut two of those. The short sides measure out to 15 inches, so I cut those to 15 and 5 eighths of an inch to match. Squirt some glue around the top, and clean up any messes. Come on, Aaron. I was trying to make that look cool. Once I have a corner lined up, I use a nail to hold it in place so it doesn't fall off the back, glue side down, and for me to clean up later. Align the other top pieces, nail the corners, and a few down the center to hold them in place. Did you guess that? mini nails. Uh, the nail counter is the last thing I add in the editing stage, so I am still 100% oblivious. I hope it was close to 125 nails. The Trio box set is currently in production. It is my third best seller and should hit the channel by next Saturday. But if you would like a walkthrough to any of the other boxes shown here, comment the number or numbers and I will start a tally chart. Since you have made it to the very end of this video, and I respect that. Thank you again. It means a lot to me that you are here, and I'll see you in the next one.